So I'm in the process of planning and expanding my photovoltaics array at home right now. And if you thought I was going to do that without 3D printing anything, well, I'd say you wouldn't know me very well. Now, one of the things you need for any photovoltaics or solar system is you need a way to get wires through the roof. So something like this, this is a clay tile cable pass through whatever. These are crazy expensive. This thing is 130 bucks and it doesn't even fit the clay tiles that are on the roof. So obviously I was gonna make one myself. Now, being on the roof, you know, exposed to sunlight in the heat, stuff needs to be kind of temperature resistant. So I was like, okay, why not try and print an adapter that goes onto the existing clay tiles out of polycarbonate. So that's what I did. This is the Prusa Mint polycarbonate blend. And as you know, polycarbonate is basically the most temperature resistant filament that you can print in normal printers, short of PI or PEK or things like that. And as such, I always recommend printing in a fully enclosed space where you have raised ambient temperatures and this wasn't that. Honestly, I am surprised that it went as well as it did, but you can see up here, it started kind of curling, this side started lifting up. So this eventually got caught, got knocked loose, and you know, the hardened was kind of encased in this mysterious, beautiful kind of blob thing. Now, the hardened is fine. Um, I did need a new fan shroud, which actually I have printed already on the mini. This doesn't quite match. I think they've used a different filament, but this thing is kind of interesting and beautiful. Like it's got this progression of being like smooth and glossy, and then it has all this interesting, uh, you know, texture up here. Let me zoom you guys in a bit. So this, I think, is a just full of, of texture, full of interesting patterns and stuff. So when I posted this, Joel, 3D printing nerd, was like, hey, yeah, you know, if you scan it, if you upload an STL, I'm gonna print it on my SL1. So I'm gonna scan this today. Uh, we're gonna see how well this works because this is black and glossy, which is kind of hard. So we're gonna see how I can work around this. And then we're gonna see what I can do with it in Blender and how we can, you know, make this into art. Accidental art, I guess. Step number one, is setting up the scan. They've actually got a brand new software package. This is 3.0.0.0 now. So I'm gonna try it out and see how well it goes. That's what it looks like. So as with most 3D scanners, if you want a precise and consistent result, you have to calibrate it first. And for that, it's using this uh, calibration plate that you put on the rotating table first, and then you rotate it by 90 degrees, do the full scanning calibration thing. Uh, it does it all by itself and it's pretty convenient. So to actually make the scan work, I don't think all these fuzzies are gonna pick up all that well. So I'm gonna snip those off real quick uh, before we throw it onto the scanner. Scanning a glossy black part is already quite a challenge. So we'll have to see how well this goes. And if it doesn't go too well, I've got a few tricks up my you know, short sleeves today. There we go, that should be nice and crisp and clean. So basically during a scan, the part needs to be you know, resting flat, it can't shake around. So all black part, we don't need any texture. And you can see it is all black. It's literally not picking up any texture at all. But we can adjust this. There we go. So anything that's red is overexposed. And I think if you go to about here, it should be okay. Like not much of the part is actually clipping into the whites. So we are gonna use the turntable. So it's gonna auto rotate between scanning positions. We're gonna tell it to do maybe a few more scanning steps. Let's do 16. You can bump this up real far if you have like really deep crevices that you're only gonna see into at one angle. And the cool thing is you can see in real time how everything is being reconstructed back here. But it's not really picking up all that much. So I'm gonna quit this scan, I'm gonna stop this, and I'm gonna turn off my studio lights here so that the scanner itself, because the scanner unit has a light built in, um, that that is illuminating the part a bit better. And I'm also bumping up the brightness slider to the max here. Okay, the first revolution is done and it is not looking too hot. Like a lot of the texture is there, but there are big gaping holes simply because this is a black glossy object. Uh, it's not gonna pick up well. So here's where that trick up my sleeves comes into play. So a while ago I was sent these 3D scanning sprays and these are actually pretty common in the 3D scanning world. Now there are two different ones here. One is a remaining, so this is basically I guess this is like white spray paint, right? 
Um, so it stays on your on your part. But the other one, um, which is why this thing is called ASUP, uh, is a no cleaning um, spray. So I guess this makes a, like a, a very thin foam film and you don't need to clean this off. I'm, I'm not sure how long this actually lasts. So yeah, let's just try it out. First things first, let's do a bit of prep work. I'm gonna grab a glove as well. Does this not need to be shaken up? Okay. Okay, I, I was expecting a more thorough coverage. But okay, it's like a it's like a very thin film. You can see it's slightly foaming up after you spray it. And probably once you once you touch it with your hand, it might come off. This should be good. It looks like it's actually still foaming up. So let's go ahead and start the scan and see if it's any better. One thing we can see right away is how much more light this is bouncing back. So we really have to dial down the exposure so that we're not overexposing the entire thing. And I'm thinking if this stuff wears down during the scan, if this just fizzes off, um, we can always apply a new layer because it's still, it's still gonna be the same geometry. Look at that detail. Okay, I am impressed. So that was roughly about half an hour worth of scanning. Um, I did a few reapplications of the scan spray to cover a bit of the internal corners. But if you look at the resulting scan we got, it is pretty good. Like there are a few corners like in here, the, the inner edges, um, where it didn't quite pick up everything, but Honestly, you get all the exterior details, that's all there, and there's actually a good bit of, of texture and detail in here. So, uh, the next thing we have to do is to mesh this, so to turn this from a point cloud, as you can see, these are just all individual dots into a mesh. Let's try medium detail first. So, there's that. Um, so this is medium detail, like it meshed it really well, but you can see there's not a lot of detail in this entire area where there is a lot of detail on the original part. I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna remesh it at high detail and I just wanna see if it does any better at the you know really fine details in here. So I was just out having lunch and as you can see, the uh, scanning spray, the white stuff is still on here. Like you can see some of the edges that are starting to get glossy and start to get black again, but it does last surprisingly long. I would have expected this to uh, wear off like a, a soap foam or something much more quickly. And also the high detail mesh is done. Now it does look a lot crisper, but you can see a lot of it is actually just noise. It looks like, yeah, there is a bit more detail, but you know, I, I don't know if this is actually usable detail. Turns out the mid scan, mid detail mesh is also two and a half million triangles. And I guess the only difference is how much detail it tries to reproduce. Um, you can still go in and simplify the mesh and, you know, tune down the amount of, of triangles that is actually getting exported. But um, yeah, looks like the amount of data that's being generated is the exact same. So I've pulled this thing into Blender thinking I could add like an artistic touch by adding a modifier or kind of picking a certain area and using that somewhere else. But uh, I kind of like the Blender skills to do that. So, you know, just printing the part as is and just scaling it up or doing something with it. I don't think that is particularly interesting. I mean, I do have this really cool uh, material on it that's like all metallic and glossy and you can really see the, the fine detail ripples here. And actually you can see that this is the 10% uh, detail version. So the original is a bit less faceted, but yeah, I mean, it looks cool, but really what's the point? Now, the one really cool thing that I found was to use decimate with the planar option. And that gives you, wait for it, that gives you a, an interesting look, which is kind of a, a crystalline, low poly look. It's not the classic, I mean, we can go to the uh, classic low poly look. That's that, I, I mean, we've seen that a million times. But I think this is just a lot more interesting. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part, uh, slice off this hollow bit where the hot end originally was and just print it in a nice, I don't know, candy apple red or some metallic filament and just keep it as, a, as an interesting, you know, conversation starter. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I'm even doing here. Uh, this just seemed like a fun thing to do and to try out a few things. So yeah, I'm just going with it. So I guess I'm just gonna take this file and export it as an STL, hold it into Prusa Slicer, and I can rotate it so that I can actually slice off the bottom. Scale it up a bit. So I've got support material turned on because this geometry is very unforgiving. Let's just see how it goes. Now 
So, there is the finished print. It's not quite candy apple red as I originally planned. I don't think I had the right filament for that. Uh, this is Pushamint uh, Mystic Green PLA, which gives it that nice kind of bicolor tone to it. And this thing does have a lot of crazy angles and shapes and details to it. Um, but I'm, I, I don't know what exactly I expected with it because this original part looks really cool. The scan in Blender did look extremely cool with that texture, with that material to it. Um, this, I think it's just going to be a reminder to me that even when you know you've got good material, you've got a good printer, you've got some printing experience under your belt, like you're not above the law. Uh, you know, you still need to make sure the conditions are right to print a demanding material like this. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a statue for me to remind me of that. And if you know more about Blender and sculpting and making things actually look cool uh, than I do, then maybe you can have a go at it yourself or just, you know, extract some texture from it because there is some really cool stuff in that scan, some really cool detail. I think what we also learned today is that this uh, Shining 3D Einscan SE does have a resolution limit. I've always thought that, yes, naturally it's gonna capture all the detail, but this sort of detail seems to be right at the edge of what it can still capture without like drowning it out into noise. The other thing that I learned is that this scanning spray is actually really neat. Um, so I didn't even realize it, but this part is now completely free of the spray. So supposedly it evaporates within four hours completely. And it's, I, I think it took a bit longer than four hours, but this part feels like there's there's never been anything on it. Yeah, I'll leave a link to this stuff in the description below. I think, I think this is really cool. Um, not sure about the permanent white spray paint style thing. Um, I'll have to try that out at a later date. So thanks for watching me do this kind of crazy project. Um, I'm still not sure what the exact point was, but I think we learned a few nice things along the way. So yeah, for me, really, this was more of an exercise of, hey, you know, scanning stuff, using the spray, seeing what kind of detail you can get and then processing it in Blender. Um, maybe you got some inspiration out of it. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Keep on making and we'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, and I've also printed the polycarbonate part on the always ready Mark 2S multi-material. Came out real nice.